On average, the pass rate at Bespoke is between 8 to 12%. So if we look at 100 people, 8 to 12 of them will actually pass, which, you know, isn't awful. However, only 3 to 5% will actually receive a payout. So that means those people will actually get their money back. They'll get a payout and they'll be deemed profitable, right? One thing to note here is, like I said before, people treat the certificates as if it's like a, you know, a very big sense of achievement and accomplishment. And look, at the end of the day it is passing the challenge and verification is great. And it's a goal that many of us will have that we want to pass. However, one thing I want to touch on here is it's very interesting how once people are passed in, so let's say 8 to 12% of people are getting that funded account, only 3 to 5% are receiving a payout. So what mental shift and what paradigm shift is happening between challenge and verification versus live account? And there's a couple of things to note here. One could be you're sharing it on social media and you're creating this kind of false sense of I'm a funded trader now because there's some kind of meaning behind that and we do look for validation from that because nowadays if you said you had a million pound personal and you made 10%, not many people would care if you posted that on YouTube, but if you said you had a million pound in funding, everybody's like, oh my God, how? And I think it's because a million pound in funding feels more easier to obtain for the for the normal individual than a million pound personal does, because that sounds like, oh my God, I'm not there yet, but funding is not too hard. I've just got to buy a couple of accounts, right? So I think people can relate to it more. However, what's happening is when people are saying, I'm a funded trader, they're getting that sense of validation, they're feeling good about it, but then they're going live and they're doing one of many things. They're under pressure because they have to perform because now everybody knows they're funded. They don't perform very well at all. Two, they're implying pressure on now they're going to change their entire life, their financial situation is going to change and they're going to be a millionaire. Get on the old blower to the missus, yo babe, we're going to be a millionaire today because I've got funded. And three, people are trying to flip it like it's an Anne's 50 quid because they're just looking at it as, oh my God, what if prop firms disappear? I need to rinse it up now and make as much as possible. And I saw Forex Smash 69 make 500 grand on Twitter, so I need to emulate that. A lot of people aren't going into it with a longevity mindset and looking at the bigger picture. The first thing, as I've always said, is you should be focused on getting your return back and your investment back. So if you've got a funded account and you've got live, a couple of percent, lock it in, don't trade it for the month or the two week period, get paid, get your money back, get your investment back, go again, right? Keep it as a way to make and generate income and then buy more challenges and continue to grow and generate that income. Don't just shoot for the moon straight away. Again, that gambling mindset is holding you back and it's not what trading's about. If you're still treating it like gambling, you need to rethink things. The key here is to grow your wealth and the more capital you have under management, the easier it is to make money. Now, I know it's hard at the time to scale that capital, but there's a great opportunity now with firms that have no time limit. And I truly believe this no time limit is gonna be as close to a personal account as you will ever get because even if you finish a month in drawdown, you can just carry on the next month and that's how trading should be. If you were down for the month, just like a business, if they had a poor month, they wouldn't shut the business down and stop. They would just carry on the month after. They may look to change and improve things in terms of tweaks to themselves or their brand. So this is where you would look at your ASR. You would go over the month's performance and you would ask yourself, was there anything you did differently versus previous performance? Did you follow your plan? Was you off plan? Was you was there something to do with your mindset psychologically? Did you hesitate? Did you mistrade? Whatever it was. And you would look to improve on that for the year, for the month after, right? And it's, it's just got to be that thing again of treating trading like a business. It is a business and it can make you incredible amounts of wealth and it can change your life as long as you treat it in that manner. But if you're treating it in a manner of just gonna make loads of dough and flip accounts, it may not do what you want it to long term. And you do have to ask that question of yourself. And if you look at the stats, you know, it says it that eight to 12% of people will pass, yet only three to five will get it. So it's almost half the people that actually get a live account, only half of them of the stat already that's small are getting paid out. Human emotion comes into play here. And this is why, again, on the channel, I've always said psychology is so important because a lot of people don't have their psychology in check. They're not aware enough and they're not of the understanding to control those emotions. And it's not about removing emotion. Anyone that tells you get rid of your emotions is an idiot. You can't ever get rid of them. They're biologically wired into us, but you can learn to understand yourself on a greater level and you can become more aware of what is going on around you. And when you feel a certain sense of, oh, I'm thinking about doing this, you can catch yourself before you do it. And this is something I've said that I've really worked hard on through going through Rewired, where I'm able to foresee that. It's almost like I can see in the future. And before I make that mistake, I'm able to stop it in its tracks, where usually you'll make the mistake. And then after, the penny will drop and you'll be like, ah, fucked up. Average time to pass both challenges is 15 days, which 
To be honest, it's really interesting because I assumed that it would be longer due to the fact that they have no time limit and I thought the no time limit would really benefit people. However, it still seems that people are going in it pretty aggressive and trying to get it past quick. Now, I'm not saying if you trade every day, that's a bad thing. I'm not saying you should only trade now and then. But what I am saying is, remember, you do have no time limit. The fact that the majority of people are passing within 15 days is a little bit mad when you think about it because... A lot of firms offer 30 days, right? And people struggle with them. However, these guys offer no time limit and people are still rushing it. Now, this one's an interesting one. So 16% of people are actually taking over 31 days to pass, which shows again that some people are taking on board the no time limit and they're utilizing it to their advantage. It could just be that there's been quiet months, quiet markets. Some people are moaning about range bound conditions. Some people favor range bound conditions. Again, it completely depends on you and your system. However, it's a decent stat. 16% of people have decided to just let the challenge take place. Less than 5% of people took over 60 days to pass. So again, you can see quite a small percentage of people are actually taking longer than two months, which again, very interesting for myself when I saw these results. So I was like, okay, that's quite interesting how, you know, it's taking very little time for people to pass. And this could come to a number of things. It could come to risk parameters, it could come to market conditions, it could come to the person holding trades for longer, higher risk reward. There's many different factors. Trading every day, scalping. There's so many different things that go into this, but obviously these are just averages. This one's a very interesting one. The average amount of trades to pass is 43 trades. That's a lot of trades. 43 trades taken on the account to pass is mental. Like serious amount of trades. And if people are doing that within 15 days, it begs the question, how are you finding 43 trades in 15 days? Like maybe you're a scalper, again, understandable, but remember, we're focusing on the bigger picture, right? We wanna scale and manage large capital. Would you, as an investor, for example, would you give someone a million pound if they said they would take 43 trades in 15 days? likelihood is you wouldn't, right? So again, looking at the bigger picture, if you're looking at going down and building a track record and getting investment funding, or even yourself and your own personal funding, would you be taking 43 trades on average to pass or to hit, say, 8 to 10%? probably not very healthy and again just begs the question are people over risking are people over trading there's a number of things that come into this and i just find it fascinating which is why i'm sharing it because it gives you guys and girls an insight into you know the average trader most traded asset is actually gold so xau usd which again i can kind of see and then you have eu and gu following behind and then i think uj and then just other pairs in general so the most popular pairs are gold EU and GU, which again, pretty standard across all firms. I believe with bespoke gold, there's no commission on metals. And I also believe gold doesn't have a crazy spread hour, right? So I know a lot of people favorite for that reason, especially people that are swing trading and holding trades overnight. So again, the gold traders out there that are a little bit psycho and love the volatility, fair play to you, you're clearly killing it. The good thing with gold, I guess, is when it goes, it goes. So again, that could be people riding a trend and perhaps they're getting, you know, one big trade that's passing them, or they're taking multiple scalps in a trend. And obviously, again, that's why the numbers are quite high. Again, remember, this is an average, right? So this is not just like everybody trades gold, that's the end of that. Average win rate across all accounts is around 63%, which I guess is a lot, is on the higher side um, in terms of, you know, people winning trades, it's pretty high. And if you were trading the system, and you had a 63% win rate, you wouldn't be too bothered by that, it's pretty sound. Again, depends on risk reward amounts of losses in a row, etc, etc. But they're just a brief overview and a brief kind of view on stats in general. Hopefully add some value and to get out and touch on prop firms. So without further ado, appreciate you all for watching. Catch you in the next video. Peace out.